The crowd does not know who will be revealed. The lights have gone out in the arena. Who could it be on this exciting, thrilling episode of Sports Kita Wrestling's in-depth wrestling talk show? The lights are on. It's the inside cradle this whole time. We never saw it coming. What's it uh, we go in deep. We get ridiculous. It's the inside cradle here from Sports Keto Wrestling. That is Rick Uchino and the great state of Ohio. It's for lovers and for wrestling fans. I'm Kev Callum here in Chicago, Illinois, the greatest wrestling city in the world. Uh, and we are going to get into a whole bunch of different stuff. Alistair Black, formerly known as Tommy End, now known as Malachi Black, is in AEW due to a clerical error. This is one of the <laughs> weirdest wrestling stories of the year, on top of the fact that his wife is now in the company that she was let go from, that he was just let go from. And what are those dinners going to be like? How's how's work for you? I don't think I'm allowed to tell you how work is. Maybe that's going to be happening. Also, a worlds will collide on today's episode as we'll be talking to Millennial Meltzer himself, Fightful Sean Rossap uh, expected to join us within the hour. And also we'll be talking to a man who's once again known as Big Damo, Killian Dane. Killian yeah. Dane, we'll, we'll have a little bit of our conversation there, there, with him. There's another happy couple split up uh, by WWE. Just as Nikki Cross gets this big push, Nikki Ash, almost a superhero. God love her. She's so into it, and I love it. I'm all on board with Nikki Cross. Her husband gets let go. Uh, Roderick Strong, uh, his wife gets let go. They're splitting up families all over the place in WWE right now. It's madness. Madness. It. madness. My, fa my favorite Jim Ross line of all time. My guy, he's got a family. He's got a family. It's my, fa <laughs> it's my favorite Jim Ross line. Uh, but if you're joining us uh, on, fa on YouTube, this is uh, one of our YouTube exclusive shows, why don't you hit the like button? Why don't you subscribe to the channel? All right. And if you want to enjoy more of our content, you can also check out the Sports Keto Wrestling podcast channel. Our audio channel has all of our big shows, including our weekly Raw review with Ru uh, Vince Russo himself uh, going off on Monday Night Raw every single week. Dutch Mantel, you and Dutch Mantel covering Friday Night SmackDown with Smack Talk. Great episodes with him, by the way, too. You want a mixture of that. Three. Oh. Give SP3 some love. Oh, SP3, you guys had a great debate a few weeks oh, ago yeah. on that show, too. You guys, you guys get into it. The S to the P to the one, two, three, SP3 on the show. SP3, True Hill Heat. Shut up. <laughs> um, so we have a lot to get into. Fun episode. On top of the Alistair Blackman, which was just last night, I cover that with our very own Jose G. We did the debrief. Uh, very unique episode, by the way. That is up on the YouTube channel. Go check it out where we had Rico live from the arena. We did the live from the arena report, which was really, really unique and cool. Uh, he got some great uh, crowd, that raw crowd reaction of Aleister Black, Malachi Black, Tommy End revealing himself. Let's just jump right into our opening story here. Uh, this is one of the biggest jumps between WWE and AEW we've seen in some, some time. They are the two major competing wrestling companies. They are back in front of live crowds. What a great night it was for AEW. Banner night all around in Miami, Florida uh, at the Knight Center. Uh, pretty full house. Don't know if it was sold out, but you, you could feel like it was sold out. Oh, and the, the story of the night. Hot. Hot. Yeah. The, the story of the night is lights go out. The old cla ECW classic. Turn off the lights. Turn the lights back on. Who is it? It's Aleister Black. Tommy Ann. That's Tommy Ann. No, he's he's now known as Malachi Black. As if uh, someone, someone just handed me a note. Um, and he lays out Arn Anderson and lays out Cody, who are active early in the night, winning a match themselves. And, uh, you know, he's inserted right into the top program with one of the top names in the company. And this is just over 30 days after he left WWE. Yeah. The story gets more interesting. And maybe we'll get more information from, from Mr. Sean Ross up when he joins us here is that apparently this is outside of the normal window that you would see someone who's released from Raw or SmackDown to the quote-unquote main roster. And usually, uh, talent with WWE in that perspective is in a 90-day non-compete window. They're still compensated, but they're in a 90-day non-compete window. His window was 30 days. That's the window that's usually applied to contracts tied to NXT. So was there a clerical error of some kind that allowed this to happen? And then people saying it's the biggest paperwork botch of all time. So uh, what do you think of the de debut? What do you think of the scenario? And we'll get into the uh, Selena Vega factor of it here in a minute. I am I am so happy for 
Alistair, Tommy, Malachi, whatever he wants to be called nowadays. I'm extremely excited for him. I'm extremely excited for AEW. I'm extremely excited for AEW fans because this, this is money. This is a home run. This is a no doubt, no brainer. We can talk about all day long that, you know, it's like, oh my God, their roster is so full. They can't take any of these guys. But when you get guys like Andrade, when you get guys like Christian, when you get guys like Miro, and when you get guys like Malachi Black who are out there on the free agent market, who are bona fide stars, who for years were mis, uh, misused uh, in WWE and not valued in WWE, you can bring them in and let them blossom bloom to their full potential this is a g d home run mm -hmm. i'm excited at the same time i'm a wwe fan and i'm sitting here and I'm, I'm so disappointed in the company because it's like how did you f this up so badly one how did you see no value in a guy like alistair black who you brought up on the main roster in 2019, put him in a makeshift tag team with Ricochet, split them up, had didn't have the guy lose for an entire year, but at the same time, you never really built anything toward him. You bring him back, or you take him off TV for months at a time, then you bring him back for one night, he hits Black Mass on Big E, and all of a sudden, oh, we're really excited because we're finally going to see something new, and then you release him. For some ungodly reason, you drop him. I, I don't I don't know how or why they didn't see value in Alistair Black. And we this is a number of guys like this. The same guys that I brought up, Miro and Andrade, bona fide stars that if used correctly can make you money that the fans are invested in. They immediately go over to WWE or AEW and they make an impact. When they could have been making that same impact for WWE if they would just let these people be themselves and utilize them properly. And it, it is something that is, we've seen all too often with these guys that get brought up, built up in NXT. They build that following. They bring them up to the main roster, and then they flounder because WWE just handcuffs them down to the floor. Mm -hmm. And I don't get why they do that. And then the clerical error to not move his non-compete up to 90 days. They may have we, let it We go. don't know that. We don't That's know about the clerical error. Reporting. That's what PW Insider's reporting. That okay, so this is a clerical error. Yeah, okay. that they so brought I, I, I want to be sure of that. Yeah, so at least that's what Meltzer, that's what PW Insider are reporting, that they just did not, ex when they brought him up in 2019, they didn't extend out his, his non-compete. They just forgot to do it. And then they let him go, 30 days, boom. Now, they might have let him out of the non-compete, regardless, if, if he was getting ready to get paid by somebody else, that's fine. But to just not, not ha see the value in him and just say, screw it, let him go, this is, I, I mark my words, this is going to be one of those things that WWE regrets for years to come. Years. Sure. And, and, and if he wants to go back to WWE at some point, whew, that's going to be an interesting conversation, you know? And it, it's always a possibility. It's always a possibility. And he was, uh, he, he's not one of these guys. He didn't go the John Moxley route. He was very, very grateful, you know, in, in all of his uh, Twitch comments about WWE. Uh, you know, he expressed his disappointment because he was he was looking forward to to revealing more of the Dark Father character. Showed that he had a very good creative back and forth with uh, even the highest name you can think of, Vince McMahon, saying, you "Yeah, know, absolutely." I, I, and also, you recognize like they were doing something pretty cool with me there at the end. I was getting like animated intros, and we there was a direction of where we were going, and then he was you know, boom right out there. So his release was the mo was one of the more shocking ones of these yes. forty people they let go. You know, yeah. him and uh, Brian Roman, those were the two this year that that really kind of just like, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. In terms of big names jumping back and forth between these two competing companies, uh, I, I do think I know everyone thinks every time someone gets out of WWE, they're going to go to AEW. That just isn't the case. I just mm -hmm. don't think the slots are there. I don't think I don't think AEW has the structure right now even to do that. Even with another show coming up, it just it's not the same thing as WWE where they have all these different outlets and and different things they can do it with. You know, the, you have a roster of talent over in the UK, and it's the UK that you could say is a top tier talent, you know? Uh, so it, there's different spots there, but he is a very unique guy who had a lot of light put on him in WWE in various different ways. So, and I also think um, he's a supernatural character in the sense of like that, like if you want to scratch that itch for the sci fi comic book crowd, you know, the, the goth kids, the, the Alexa Bliss fans, you know, the anime guys that jump into, into the, he's in that, he's in that world, you know, uh, and, and he has that appeal. And the thing is like, 
he could be your undertaker, your lone wolf that says only a handful of things. And everybody goes, ah, right. Uh, and he's capable of that big hand, a lot of new matchups, a lot of fresh stuff. Um, I also think it's a challenge to some people, uh, because he comes in and he has that WWE polish on him. He knows how to frame himself to the camera. There's going to be some people now, you know, who doesn't like this move. Well, we'll get really speculative. I'll tell you who doesn't like this move oh we're going deep we're going on the spec going deep we always go deep in the inside cradle all right we're gonna go for the curve all right all right we're doing the roll-up finish we're not going we're not going for the big bang uh, finish here uh, all right i'll tell you who doesn't like this anyone who is in the program after the programs that are written right now if everything they have written is three or four months out and they were thinking like, hey, hang in there tight, man, with the way things are working. You know, maybe we get you built up on uh, on this show and then you'll be the next one in line to get in there with Cody or you'll be the next one in line to go after Omega. Or we're going to do maybe a, a, a TNT championship program with you. All pushback. The pecking order changed and he can, he walks into the hen house and he could start to he, he could eat whatever chicken he wants. All right. Because this guy comes in, and all right, if you're going to come in here from WWE under these circumstances in this way, with this type of hype, also, you didn't come over from NXT. You came over from, from the A-Show. They get him from SmackDown. He was on the most watched television show in all of wrestling the last time he was seen on TV. For, for one time. One time. Kick, one kick time. Big E in the teeth and and left. Well, he had those promos said, and stuff like that, too. Screw this. He had, the, he, yeah. Yeah, he, he, had the, he had the promos and stuff like that. He did. But he comes in. But, I mean, you know who doesn't like this? I don't think if you're Brian Cage, you look at this and you're like, oh, great. You know, like you like I, I, I'm not I'm not putting words in anyone's mouth, but this changes the whole order of stuff here. You know, See, I, maybe, maybe because I look at Alistair Black as a guy who comes in. And that's a good problem for us, the fans. Yeah, <laughs> you know oh, I mean, no, like no, we, yeah. we, get, we get what we want. Yeah, Th this happens everywhere, man. Uh, sure. <laughs> somebody somebody bring. It's a competitive field, man. It's you see this in radio all the time. Like when when the when the young guy comes in. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh damn, son, you coming after my spot? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Ain't happening on my watch. How many times have you been have you had your throat slit by somebody who you thought was a mentor or a friend? All right. How many times has that happened in your professional career? Because I need two hands uh, to count the times that's happened to me in my 12 years in the business. All right. It happened. <laughs> everybody thinks they're coming for their spot and to a degree you are because you want to be where the top dogs are. So this, this is nothing new. So yeah, you bring in another guy. If you're one of these guys on dark uh, or one of these guys that's going to be on, uh, on rampage, whenever that pops up and you're trying to work your also, way. These guys in AEW, everyone thinks every, everyone in AEW has like a locked in contract. You know that you've heard this too. There's a lot of people that are only, there's some people working just dates that just have dates. They only, they only work the dates. They don't have a guaranteed locked in deal. Uh, Cardona you be came for like a three week thing, and then he was gone. Now he's an impact. Yeah, Cardona is another example of that. Uh, and there's a handful of people that in uh, in the AEW dark world that are not under contract with them, that are just working the dates, and that's it. It's plenty of people that go to their shows that are not on the show. They're not utilized. They go and they, they just wait to see if they get used, and then they get paid. You know, uh, and so it'll be interesting. Uh, I think the matchups with him are, are through the roof. The starting with him and Cody shows their level of investment in him. I think I think he needs to breathe. I think Cody's a perfect first opponent for him. I think he should breeze right through him. I think, you know, if if all outs the game plan there, it's going to be you know Malachi versus Cody at at all out. Fade to black, kick his ass inside of three minutes, send him packing for a while, and then boom. Guess what? You're right there and ready to go for your new AEW champion who should be Hangman Adam Page. I think you put him right at the top of the card and you let the entire world know what we already know is that Malachi Black is an effing main event star and we are ready to elevate him to that spot. You already think Hangman Page getting that belt off Omega. Look at you just jumping right oh, ahead. Dude! Because what Kenny said is right. He's beaten everybody. Like, unless you you're not going to move Miro up to that spot yet, because you're not going to do heel versus heel. I just don't think that would work. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I think hey, I think it's the logical progression. I think Hangman's ready. I think Hangman is ready, and I think the entire uh, AEW universe, if that's what they're called, uh, is is ready to see Hangman. Dude, did you hear that pop last night? Did you hear that Who's pop? pop? Hey, uh, go watch the video. 
uh, Rico, shout out to Rico Glorioso, who's with us on the debrief, part of the team. He was at the show, sent us the clip of the raw reaction. Over 27,000 people watched that, just from the raw, what, what it was like in the crowd. We'll be dropping some more footage of that on our video channels. Just just cool stuff from the crowd that we caught. And uh, let's talk about this factor. One second. Let's bring One second. I'm going to be doing mm -hmm. the same thing, by the way, in two weeks. In two weeks, when I am live in Cleveland for most of SmackDown, <laughs> we'll get to that in a few minutes. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to the SmackDown. You're you're mad about it, but I'm not because maybe because I'm not going to be there. Uh, we'll talk about this um, this very odd thing that's going to happen with the upcoming uh, WWE broadcast of SmackDown in two weeks. Something that WWE has never done with SmackDown. A very very unique thing that is coming up here in just a second. But let's talk about what just happened this past week on SmackDown. And that is the surprising, shocking, coming out of nowhere return of Zelina Vega. Now, she lost oh. a match that she was oh. just thrown into on her day or her reintroduction here to Liv Morgan. Roll up finish. Not, a, not, a, I wouldn't call it the cleanest, you know, lay down victory. Uh, but you, you were quite angry about this. But Zelina Vega is back in WWE in a big, big way. Uh, you, you were like, why do they have her lose right away? I mean, you were oh, there some, that wasn't, you liked it. Hell no, that wasn't me. Okay, are you, are you are you getting me confused with with the internet crowd? No, okay, I'm sorry. I get exactly what they're doing. I get exactly yeah. what they're doing. Uh, by the way, is, did literally. you think it was the test? Do they do the test to see if you're going to come back and, and do what we ask you to do? Is this a test? <laughs> no, no, I because I think it's all about building Lib Morgan. Uh, by the way, uh, AEW did just make it official. They said, "Welcome to the team, Malachi Black." They put it out there. Malachi Black is all elite. The graphic is up. It is done. Which means it's a signed deal. That's a done deal. That is signed, finished, completo. They don't. They only do that for the people who have signed long term. So uh, Malachi is going to be there for the long haul, and good for him. But yeah, no, bringing back Zelina is a great thing, and no, I don't have a problem with her losing whatsoever because you know what? They already put her over. They had Sonya Deville go out there, put her over, and then put her in the damn Money in the Bank ladder match, and then that was it. That was that was her rub. She's in. She's so more important, so much more important than Liv Morgan that she's already in the damn match. This is all about the slow build of Liv Morgan. And this is something what, you know, I, I have on the rundown to talk about much later. But guys, this is this is by design. Mm -hmm. They want you to be pissed off for Liv Morgan. Not that Zelina Vega lost in her opening match. Who gives a shit? Who, who, who cares that Zelina Vega lost in her first match? She's back. She adds a much-needed depth to the SmackDown women's division. She's insanely talented. She's going to have plenty to do. She's going to be in the Money in Bank ladder match. Just be happy that she's back. This is about the build for Liv Morgan because what has she done so far? She has racked up win after win after win over two women who are already in the Money in the Bank briefcase, and for some reason, Sonya Deville's not putting her in the match. Hmm. I think this is going to continue. I don't know who Sonya Deville puts in uh, tomorrow night, Friday, or today, depending on when you're listening to this podcast. I don't know who Sonya Deville is, is going to be putting into the match to, uh, on SmackDown this week, but I fully expect Liv Morgan to be pissed about it. It's going to be rinse and repeat. She's going to challenge whomever that is, and she's going to beat that person, and then she's not going to be able to find Sonya Deville. And I personally hope that next week, the first live show in front of fans in Houston, Texas, I do I do believe is the uh, the first city, <laughs> That Sonya Deville announces the final competitor as herself. Sonya announces her return to action. She puts herself in Money in the Bank and completely leaves Liv Morgan out of it. And then Morgan comes down to the ring. She's all pissed off. You got a hot crowd who's behind Liv Morgan. And then she beats the holy hell out of Sonya Deville. And you know what you've just done? You have successfully built a baby face with crowd sympathy who is hot for, who is ready to see her extend. You know what you're doing? You're recreating the Becky Lynch. Not, yep. orga not as organic as Becky Lynch was, but you're recreating it. It's all about the build for Liv Morgan right now. I hope they follow through with it. If I'm booking, that's the direction I'm going. Liv Morgan can then cost Sonya Deville the Money in the Bank ladder match at the pay-per-view two days later, and then those two can have a program uh, for God knows how long because Damn it, Kevin. They are peacocks. You got to let them fly. Let these women just do what you do. You need a strong women's feud that isn't surrounding a championship, and those are two people who can do it. Last year, I had both of them pegged as my up-and-coming superstars for the year. Should have won world championships by the end of last year. Different circumstances didn't allow that to happen, but the talent is still there. They're even better now. Push them. Let's go. Push both ladies. I agree. I think this year's Money in the Bank is going to have a lot of fun surprises on it in a way that are like, I wouldn't say fun surprises, but just like understated things that are that are being built. And Liv Morgan is one of those things. 
I, I also think she has a really understated following online. There are people that are really, really behind her in, in a very unique way. And I, I'm, I'm rooting for her to have something coming out of Money in the Bank. And Money in the Bank itself is a way bigger show this year because it is that first big let's get WWE back in front of uh, a real big crowd arena momentum. The fact that Vega is back, who is a heat getter, I think is smart. I think the reintroduction of Vega is good. Uh, and uh, you can go off on Vega. She said she wanted to have people unionize, and that's why WWE let her go. And she wanted to do things with her own third-party apps. That's a whole other discussion. She's back in the fold with WWE. She is one of the best talkers in the business. And we've never even seen the ceiling of what she can do in WWE in terms of being oh, yeah. an in-ring competitor. So the thing I think that made it interesting here is she was reintroduced as a superstar, not a manager, which is what, what a majority of what she's been doing. Yeah. Uh, in WWE. So they brought her back in the fold and she's now an active competitor. It's very interesting. And she's a heel. She's a, a heel, heel, which is interesting because they they have a lot of heels uh, in, in WWE, especially on SmackDown. The, the few women that they have, I mean, you have, I mean, you do need future competitors for Bianca Belair if she gets through Bailey and she gets through uh, Sasha Banks. So maybe that's the direction they go. I'm not saying Zelina is going to win the money in the bank briefcase, but you need more heel characters to step up and challenge Bianca Belair. That is definitely something that uh, she could work her way towards. Don't forget, right before she re was released last year, she was working with Asuka, challenging for the Raw Women's Championship. So she's been there before. Maybe they elevate her there. Regardless, this is adding depth to a women's division that badly needed it, especially somebody as talented as Alina Vega. I think other reinforcements are coming up soon. Hopefully we'll get some uh, insight on that with Sean Rossap, who is scheduled to join us before the end of this recording. Uh, card but, subject to sap so yeah we'll, we'll, card we'll, subject to maybe he's maybe he ducks me you know he, he, he just might duck me like he's been ducking me in the ring for weeks now just saying well, he's been ducking me I, I have an issue i have a personal family issue <laughs> with him that i will bring up so if you stay, stay tuned stay tuned stay if in the Sean zone Rossap dare show his face <laughs> uh let's talk about this this was big news i think i don't think people should overlook this this is another sign of WWE's ability to reach out into the world of pop culture beyond the wrestling bubble that everyone says they're supposed to stay in. And whenever they get out of it, people go, well, how can you do that? You're mad because it seems like they're going to be getting out of the general Cleveland, Ohio area. Uh, because coming up in two weeks, uh, SmackDown, the A show of wrestling, as I mentioned, the most watched show in professional wrestling right now, is going to be broadcasting from Cleveland, Ohio. But it's going to be a split broadcast from Miami, Florida, where AEW was last night. Now, the big thing in Miami is not going to be just another arena filled with wrestling fans. No, it's going to be a festival grounds filled with the one of the biggest music festivals going on in the country, the Rolling Loud Hip Hop Festival. A lot of big names on it, a lot of hip songs, a lot of big personalities, and WWE is going to send some superstars down there and have matches at the festival while also doing stuff in Cleveland. So it's going to be like a split car difference here. Now, this is a lot. WWE, the last time they tried something like this in terms of doing two different things on the same night and broadcasting it was the 25th anniversary of Money at Raw with mixed results when they ran the Manhattan Center, which was the spiritual home of Money at Raw when it started, and they also ran the Barclays Center. There was some stuff that worked. There was some stuff that didn't work with it. Uh, and, and so a lot of people who were at one of the venues were, were ticked off because there wasn't really a whole it was lot the Manhattan of center. They got, right. they got some matches between stuff, but really what they got is a DX reunion. Uh, the bullet club guys got to do the two suite with them and, and they did a handful of short matches, and but they not got that, Taker's promo. That's pretty much, and it. they got undertaker's promo. Uh, I know the Miz did something as well, where they got him from one arena to the other, which was interesting. So they tried stuff, but it didn't, it didn't maybe hit. This is different, though. I think this is a powerful play by WWE because if you're at the music festival and you're just it's it's a lounge, you're you're coming for the big name headlining acts, which I, I would say by that standard of time are not going to go on until 10, 30, 9, 30 their time. So maybe you don't want to see the semi main act at a music festival. You don't want to see the seven to eight, eight, nine o'clock acts. You've seen some acts in the day when it's hot and it's cool. You want to chill down for a bit. I'm going to go over the wrestling tent. The tent, it's a big giant tent. It's a big pop culture event. It's a lot of people being cool. What's cool? Hip hop music is cool. Let's let's do something very cool with our branding of our, our A show on network television and put it at one of the biggest music festivals in the world. 
And some of you may think, like, this is such a weird thing for WWE. They've done this quietly with NXT over in Europe. They did it with the uh, NXT Loud partnership with different rock bands. This is a different one to go into the hip-hop world. WWE does always want to develop unique uh, palettes of their audience. I do, I do think to go into that world and say, we want to go and be relatable to a young African-American audience because we have African-American stars that we're really proud of that we've developed. This is the right time to do it. And I think if that's what you're going for, this is an interesting play by WWE and a huge one by that. Uh, this is something they've done with NXT at a smaller scale in Europe, but I think they can do something really, really powerful here, especially if they're going to you know, put the right names in that situation. Wonderful idea. It's fantastic. I love it. I love the idea. Uh, here we here. here I, wait, I, what? I, no, I get it. I 100% get it, especially when you're having problems uh, <laughs> maintaining your audience. You want to bring fresh eyes to the product. So you mm -hmm. want to. You, you do this to create new fans. Even if you only have 20, 50, 100 people come back, guess what? That's 20, 50, 100 people you do. Or, or Laps fans, or get people that haven't watched in a long time to check it yes. out, you know? Yeah, get people to come back, to, to hop on board. I have no problem with this. Now, Kevin, you would know uh, better than me, here because I do have one small issue with this. This is a festival that has multiple dates. Right. Yes. Like it's so it's it's gonna be coming back in like New York or something like that later on in the it, year. It's 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 in it's a festival that runs in several different markets. It's still a festival. All right. So they, they have it in Miami, they have it in other cities as well. I, I don't know off the top of my head, but I know they run it along the East Coast around the in the summer season. Yeah. Okay. I would have done it then. Because now I'm I'm somebody who is heading to that Cleveland show. Mm -hmm. Somebody who will be driving five hours from Cincinnati to Cleveland to watch a live wrestling performance. I'm, I'm a little miffed that now I'm going to be half the night watching wrestling on a TV screen that I, I could. I don't know if that's the truth. Home. I re here's the thing. If you're here's why, if you're in Miami and you're at a music festival and you go in there for an hour and they have the wrestling stuff on a big screen and it's somebody just like cuts a promo and then 20 minutes later you get like a 10 minute match. Okay or something like that, and it's really just one match. They're going to do maybe a handful of other things there. And you have a couple of people from NXT doing some stuff there, so you can film some stuff for NXT. You can film some stuff for your digital brand, all right? Because a lot of it's going to be social media stuff, and you do one big segment on TV. That's all it really is. I think, Cle I think Cleveland's still going to get your... I've heard, I've it, heard it, as much as two matches are going to be happening you know, in, in Miami, which could be, even if it's a quarter of the show. If I'm a guy who paid for okay. an entire... You know, two hour experience of live wrestling, and I have to watch two matches on a TV screen. If I bought tickets, which I didn't, but if I'm somebody who did buy tickets to this Cleveland show, which was already announced ahead of time, mm -hmm. had I known that even a quarter of the show or half of the show was going to be in another venue and I'm going to be watching it on a TV screen, I wouldn't have bought it. Maybe Put I a match in the ring. Maybe, maybe, Put maybe, maybe. So you're going to be putting a match on the TV screen and a dark match in the ring at the same time? Just put a match in the ring. <laughs> I just, I, or, I don't, or, or I don't do this, or do this. Hey, how's hey. it going to go? But the optics of it, the optics of it for those people who already bought the tickets to the Cleveland show and then you change it is bad. And the I dark main event, I've dude. talked to some people. I've already talked to some people okay. who, who are, who are miffed about this. Dark main event, dude. You do the dark main event. Hey, we know you're a little miffed about this, but don't worry. Coming up. After we after SmackDown goes off the air, it's Roman Reigns versus Rey Mysterio. It's it's we're gonna do a cage match or something. Oh, like yeah. that. <laughs> They'll come out and be like, "All right, hey, uh, one night only. Uh, here's uh, Lesnar and Lashley, and go." <laughs> <laughs> Nobody filming on their phones. All right, yeah, Nobody nope, nope, <laughs> stop getting your phones, and we're gonna give you the MIB <laughs> neuralizer after this is over. <laughs> yeah exactly i don't think it'll be that bad i think it's a smart thing and i i uh, this is I just me it. on the I outside i would have just done I, I, if i was wwe time. you are was... tickets to the cleveland show though and every time okay. i say the cleveland show by the way i think of the cleveland show on fox uh the family guy spinoff so i hate the fact that i've said cleveland show like 19 times already but if i'm you've already sold tickets to this cleveland show and now you're saying, oh, well, we're changing it and we're moving part of the show, a quarter of it, half of it, whatever, to another venue. It's kind of a middle finger to the pe people who already bought the, the tickets. For the I think they'll figure out a way to make people happy. I hope. I, I, I'm, I look, I'm looking out. forward to it regardless. But if I'm WWE people, and this works once, though, you know, when they get a hit, when they get when they get something that works, they're going to want to do something like this. again. But I'm also surprised like WWE isn't doing stuff like this at 
the the Comic Con. I've always thought they should always have something big at Comic Con, like a big pop culture event, like a cross intersectional event. Well, I always thought they, why aren't you doing something at the Super Bowl? If Fox has a Super Bowl, the week of the Super Bowl, you guys should have something. They, they did. I think they did. Did they did a match like that or something like that? They did well, like, they didn't do yeah. it at the. They didn't do it at the Super Bowl. That was my big thing. Halftime heat, man. Do it at the damn game. Yeah. Oh, do, that'd be awesome. Do a match in the middle of the freaking football field on the fifty yard line <laughs> for the Raw Women's Championship. Dude, do it in the parking lot. Put do the mini to build the mini arena in the parking lot outside the stadium. Do, do that. that. You know? No, that's your halftime show. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no uh, Florida Georgia line or Bruno Mars or whatever agent no. Walker they want to screw the music. Hell in a cell you, halftime. You show. are doing hell in a cell halftime heat. You're doing an inferno match. I don't care. Don't we'll care. steal the night. Get the we'll biggest the effing stars you can and put them in the middle of the ring and do a 10 minute match for the Raw Women's Championship or or whatever. Imagine Becky Lynch and Bailey battling it out for the Raw Women's Championship at halftime of the Super Bowl. How many damn eyes are going to be on that halftime oh, show? If I'm if I'm NBC Universal and I have Peacock, I would want a halftime heat like right away. I would want it like right away. I would want something like that right away. Heal the audience to to another channel. Do it at the effing game. That's what I do. All right, I like it. We're 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 pitching all the different ideas here. Uh, we still await uh, Sean Ross up to grace us with his presence. I'm gonna send him a message. It's all right. If 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 we don't have him, he 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 owes he owes us one in the future maybe. Uh, I do want to make sure we don't skip anything on our rundown. We are up talking to a man now known once again as Big Damo. Before the end of the show, we'll also be covering next week's Fighter Fest, the first week of uh, two big weeks of elevated content for AEW. Uh, do you want to bring this up here? John Cena is shooting a new movie in August in Europe. Jeez. All right. So oh. it's interesting to think of this with current quarantine uh, guidelines in a majority of Europe. This could put him in a challenging situation to be a part of this year's SummerSlam. Right. That's the big rumor. That's the big rumor. That's the big assumption. It's going to be Cena and Roman Reigns, August 21st in Las Vegas, battling it out for the Universal Championship. That's that seems to be the money, the money rumor that everybody's going for. Not canon yet. Nothing's been announced by WWE. We haven't seen a body. We haven't seen John Cena on programming since he disappeared in the Flyer Fly Funhouse match. So, but this is interesting. You have a movie in Europe starring John Cena. We have seen movie schedules take The Rock out of out of situations with WWE before. Hey, can't do it. Film in a movie. They they the insurance won't let me. And that's the big thing. I'm sure you could find a way depending on how big Cena's part is. There's a lot of A-listers in this. So maybe his he's not the star. It's a it's an entourage type movie, so maybe his his role he's got like, I don't know, 20 minutes of screen time or something like that. You could work around the schedule. Question is going to be will that movie studio, will that production, will mm. they risk an injury to John Cena that could halt filming? That's the big question. Because if you remember the last time The Rock wrestled, when he wrestled Cena and he uh, he had the uh, abdomen injury, what was it? He um a hernia and 2013. And part, yeah. yeah. And part of his, it literally his intestines came out through his abdominal wall. He was getting ready to film Hercules like three weeks later. And they, they almost had to shut down production of the entire film because of that. And that's why you haven't seen the rock really wrestle other than two seconds against, you know, Eric Rowan since then, it's because he's been busy and he, he wants to, and, and he wants to, so John Cena may want to be there, but now all of a sudden, oh, hey, I'm getting this big check to be in this big movie with, with all these A-list actors. Plans change, pal. I'm not I'm not saying it's it, it's going to hinder him from showing up at SummerSlam, but it, it's it's another thing. It, it It's a it's a wrench in the works. So be concerned about uh, it is interesting. You know, he has also pending commitments to do the marketing of films. Marketing uh, some of these movies is pretty demanding, yep. especially as the world opens up again. I saw a lot of people say, oh, we could just do it over Zoom. We could just do it over Zoom. That isn't, I could see that. But now as the world opens up, all these major movie studios are going to want to put that money down of like, hey, you sign up for our movie. You sign up for doing a media tour for it as well. 
Uh, and that's a, a part of a lot of people that work in the movie and television industry bring that up now. And there's right. one thing they bring up to me all the time about these wrestlers, specifically Rock and Cena and Batista when they come back. And then the insurance thing to the point where Cena was on The Tonight Show promoting Fast 9, number one movie in the world. He's the villain in it, too, by the way. Uh, and he said, point blank, yeah, I will return to WWE. I don't know when. Uh, but he even mentioned insurance on, on, on the interview. Like, he pulled back the curtain completely. I, I think there's a possibility of it. There's been too much talk of Rain, Cena, for this not to happen. Maybe it doesn't happen at there's SummerSlam. A, there's a lot of smoke. And maybe, yeah, maybe they push it off until uh, until WrestleMania. So, But then the question begs, who the hell is Roman Reigns fighting at SummerSlam? Who the hell is Bobby Lashley fighting at SummerSlam? If Brock Lesnar is not going to be there. That's another report that came out today that it's very unlikely that Lesnar is going to be at SummerSlam. So, uh, all, all of a sudden now, this this show that you have been planning that you have been saying, hey, look, we're gonna we're gonna pull out all the stops, we're gonna bring in the big guns. Well, now your two big guns, your two part time challengers for your top two dominant champions, aren't gonna be there. Who's stepping up? Because Reigns is you, same problem with with Kenny Omega and AEW. He's beating everybody. Big E can only wrestle one of these guys if he wins the Money in the Bank. You make it seem like it's a given that Roman Reigns. Here on the, the it now stands as, as we record the 8th of July. Yep. Is just walking past the rated R superstar come uh, July 18th at Money in the Bank. You think uh, he's just walking through Texas with that belt, just strolling through? Yep. I think it's that easy. Yeah. I, 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 I love Edge. I do. I, I don't see Roman Reigns losing that championship anytime soon. Now, though, if John Cena is not available, once again, I'll say it again. Plans change. Plans change. Uh, we have an interview up now on our channel that you should definitely be checking out. If you're listening to the podcast, go check out our YouTube channel, which is up right now. We have so many great interviews. Uh, this year, we've had to interview, I think, some of the biggest names in the business. You and I, in the first episode of this show, we got to have Drew McIntyre on the show. Drew's, um, Drew's been on a handful of times with us this year. Uh, you got to talk to Bianca Belair the night after she won the title at WrestleMania. So we, we have a good streak here. If you were with us for the first time, we get access to people and we're very thankful for it. Uh, and we're thankful to talking to talent now on the other side of WWE. Uh, and we got to talk to one. And that is a man formerly known as Killian Dane, known once again. Uh, this, this beautiful brawler from Belfast is known once again as Big Damol. And we're going to talk to him now about his potential future, people he worked with, in WWE, could he work with them again outside of WWE? And much, much more. I'm going to pull this one up here, and we're going to talk to, in this recent interview, shout out to Raju for this great interview. He yes. uh, he's been doing, doing a great job here. Big Damo, on the record, what is his future? Is it Impact? Is it AEW? We're going to find out. Obviously, I mean, you brought up uh, Japan, but uh, the United States presents so many opportunities. And you know, these questions are coming. I mean, a lot of people, when I told them I'm going to be speaking to you, they asked me if you are going to join with Eric Young again and uh, in Impact Wrestling. I mean, a lot of people ask you that question. What do you think of that? I mean, Eric Young, I, I, like, I, I, I don't think I've got enough time to talk about how much I love Eric Young. Uh, as a person, as a wrestler, as a performer, you know, when I watched him, I, I used to think he was incredible. Um, he just, he's so varied. He could do anything, any role you put him in. Then I got to wrestle him in, in Impact uh, 2015 or 2016. And like, we we packed as much as we could into such a short batch. Um, and, you know, I just really jammed with the guy right there and then. Um, and then like a year later, I was in Sanity with him. Uh, then, you know, you you travel the world with the guy, you you know, and to be honest with you, like I, I genuinely adore Eric Young and, if there's an opportunity for us to, to wrestle each other or the team, then, you know, I, I would jump on that. Um, Eric is one of those lads who just has such a beautiful mind for this business. He loves everything that he does. And he was flying literally just before he got injured. Like he, he was having these incredible matches. Like he, I think he had a, like two nights in a row or something. Like it was like uh, James Storm and then Eddie Edwards, I think it was. And he had already had a, an ACL damage for that second one. And it's just crazy to think how good the match was. But no, the uh, as soon as he showed up on Impact, like that was the first thing I did was uh, was buy the buy the show. So because um, I needed to I needed to watch him and, and like and his stuff with Rich Swan and stuff like that last year was, was really cool. 
because uh, that's another wrestler who who I love to wrestle him as Rich Swan. He's he, he's an incredible talent. So watching those two wrestle each other, I knew it was going to be magic, and it was. <laughs> For sure, man. And obviously, you, uh, I, I mean, this question is going to come up. You brought up Kenny Omega. All Elite Wrestling is probably the second biggest thing in the, the world in terms of professional wrestling right now. Uh, quite a few big men there as well. I mean, and your talents could be utilized in a great way. Is that something you would want to do? Well, they've got, so, they've got a wonderful roster. You, you literally just said it yourself there. But like, when you, you've got the likes of Omega and Miro and, and, and stuff there, like, there's just so many great wrestlers there. Um, so like, yes, there's plenty of matchups that would be that would be incredible for for me or for anybody really. Um, Kenny's Kenny's like been on fire this last. I, I'd say that this last six years, um, he was just something else because you know you, you know I saw him before that. Like, I, first time I saw him was like 2011 or something in, in DDT, and I thought he was he was hilarious. And then he moved into. Um, he was in the junior division in, in New Japan and like he just started like rising really. Not, I wouldn't say like out of nowhere because he was always super talented and we, we had a chance to bring him over to, to the UK years ago and, and you know he was just a cut above at that point. So then seeing him years later, he comes back as the cleaner, you know, the, the villainous role and then just really from there just moves on to becoming this, this megastar. Like, I mean, you know, it, it, I'm one of the many, many thousands of wrestlers who who uh, is who will happily rate Kenny Omega, um, but he is definitely somebody I'd love to love to fight down the line. Um, and as I said, you know already about Miro and stuff like that. Miro is one of the guys who, you know, I uh, I, I only wrestled once on a house show, and he's such a personality, such a performer. Um, I, he's just one of those ones who I think I would mesh really well with. But listen, there's there's so many on that roster. It's jam packed. Um, I, I can definitely uh, see myself having great matches with so many of them. But you know, that's that, that, that's a question for another time. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is a question from someone. Uh... You're still on mute. You're still on mute, Kevin. Kevin, you're still button. on mute. No, I, I know, I know. I love the mute button. You gotta love it here. Uh, we gotta love our, our our team there, our video team working on that, and uh, the great Raju uh, for covering uh, that. Is killing well. it lately, crushing it, killing it, dude. Interviewed the Singh brothers last week. You guys can check out that interview, that two parter. We got Tommaso Ciampa. We have that two parter up. So a ton of interviews. If you haven't done already. Go subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are making that march to 20K, and we got a lot of 20K worth of content for you to check out. A lot of stuff that you could just binge on. You just want to put a bunch of our videos in a playlist. I do this all the time. I'll put up when I want to check up on local news, I'll just pull up a bunch of local news videos and just let them roll while I'm doing other work. Uh, go and do that on our channel right now over on YouTube. So, uh, moving ahead here, next week, AEW once again rolling into the the road that is laid ahead it was fun to see them with a live crowd wasn't it It was super well, exciting that, oh except for that dumbass who tried to hop the ring and well you got to give mjf credit man like, <laughs> in a world where people get more pissed off at creative than they do the wrestlers that m effer that mjf -er, <laughs> knows how to get some damn heat People love to hate that guy. I mean, I know, oh God, he, I know he did an interview one time where he talked about some guy trying to sneak in the back uh, during a show because they wanted to kidnap him. Like, people hate this guy. He is a true heel to the bone. And you had another guy try to jump the railing last night, get up in the, he did a slow job at it. I don't know if you saw the, the fan video of him, like casually strolling up to the ring. Like he was about to lay And then Jericho just jacked him. Jericho jacks him in the face a couple of times, which should be a, 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 a message to everybody. Don't try to get in the effing ring. Don't do it. You're going to get tackled. You might get punched by a really, really big, strong dude like Chris Jericho. And then you're going to end up going to jail. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Don't yep. do it. You're, don't do one, it. One too, uh, one too many soda pops last night <laughs> for that gentleman. And by soda pop, I mean alcohol. Maybe, maybe, oh. if, maybe a few too many. You know, Jack and Cokes. Yeah, Jack with, and Cokes. Yeah, there, Jack there you and go. Sodas. Uh, so yeah, they're they're, pre they're presenting some some big episodes here in the weeks ahead here, including uh, where it looks like we're gonna have uh, Fighter Fest Night One 
and night two. Uh, pretty exciting cards. Trying to give you some pay-per-view payoffs on television. We, we got some of those last night with Cody vanquishing QT Marshall in a strap match. Uh, but next week, uh, doing a little bit of an old school one if you're a WWE fan and they want to try and get those laps wrestling fans back as WWE is going to try and do some big things in the weeks ahead here as well. Christian Cage versus Matt Hardy. Uh, what do you think of this one? This one's a, a standard classic. Two guys that know each other really, really well. Dude, as as this is something I talked about ad nauseum on this show already. Like, I grew up in 98, man, like watching wrestling. That's when I started. I grew up as Christian and Matt Hardy evolved through time. And the fact that we get Christian Cage and Matt Hardy one on one again today is insane because I mean these two guys are arguably still in the best shape of their careers and they're two of the brightest minds in the wrestling business. This match is going to be a a a, a, a chess match with heated blood rival with fists it's a chess match with fists i don't know how to describe it it's gonna be insane check me i check me knuckle sandwich i can't wait to watch these two just create magic with one another obviously they have they have history obviously they have chemistry this this might be the match of the night this is this is an absolute treat i mean just the fact that we still get to watch christian you know it still hasn't quite hit me that we get to watch christian wrestle still just like Edge, like it's still special to me every time they step foot in the ring because I had already come to grips with the fact that this was never going to happen again, and now it's happening again. And Matt gonna- Hardy as well, consider the injuries he's endured, you yeah, know? and and the and just the health issues he's had outside of wrestling. Uh, part Drink of it, it in. Drink it in, folks. This is going to be. It in. And if you're if you're one of these younger fans who has never seen Christian and Matt Hardy wrestle before, you're in for a treat. You're in for something special. I love it. We'll we'll, uh, we'll see Penelope Ford in action against Yuka Sakazaki. Surprising that uh, Fighter Fest would feature two more, I would say, lower focused, lower highlighted female talents here. But it is something people keep bringing up. The top is real strong. Where is the depth with their women's roster? They tried it with that tag team tournament a while ago, which I don't think really moved the needle for a dub. No shot at anybody, but just kind of the reality of the situation. Interesting to do that. I hope both of them can get some, some rub here and get some shine. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But, Cause they need it. And, yeah. and that's one of the things is like, uh, Britt Baker, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. She did an interview, uh, with, uh, Alex McCarthy of talk sport, uh, last week late last week mm-hmm. and you know she talked about that match with thunder rosa where she said look we were going out there to prove some people wrong because people were talking shit about the women's division and yes i do think that there were people out there who were saying that yeah the women's division isn't as good or it's you know they don't have any stars or this that and the other thing like back when it first started and, and at the point yeah they to a point they were right because Britt baker when AEW first got underway was the biggest star. And she yeah. was mostly known for being squashed by Nia Jax. They have talent. You know, they have stars in the making. They always no one... have talent. And that's the thing. Like when I would complain about the women's division, I would be complaining about the opportunities for the women's division, which still isn't bountiful. Shall we say? I mean, Britt Baker won the, the AEW women's championship on a major pay-per-view that had one women's match on the main card. Mm-hmm. that's the issue so that's where yes you have depth you have rising stars like like red velvet and jade cargill uh who are coming in Britt baker is on fire right now you still have others like like Riho, and you bring in thunder rosa every once in a while so they have the stars there absolutely i want to see more matches like this on these big shows to give some of the other women a showcase to give them a chance that's what i've been asking for all this time and it's nice to see that these uh these girls are going to get it uh, we will also see a match that is interesting. The FTW Championship, Brian Cage versus Ricky Starks. This is the one that makes me scratch my head. Okay. A bit. Uh, and it, it, it's interesting. We, I, I, Brian Cage has been on TV. He's, he's got, he's got Taz as his manager, right? And they're doing this kind of inner faction thing with Ricky Starks. And I think they'll have a fantastic match. But if you told me of any of the matches that I'm supposed to pay attention to that I could maybe skip, this is that match. And that sounds very, very shocking. I, I, it sounds dismissive of me to say it, but I'm just saying how I feel. I'm just thinking it out loud. Sure. Yeah. And when Brian Cage came into AEW, he was supposed to be the man. He was supposed to be the guy. He was supposed to be their Brock Lesnar, 
their big super dynamic guy. He's had he did he did have a featured match with John Moxley and all those different things. I'm not saying he's lost in the shuffle, but when you see a guy like Malachi Black walk in, Brian Cage is one of those guys I'm talking about that's going to get booted down. If you're Ricky Starks, you're getting booted down. Like you're, you're someone else is going to is going to come in and take those spots above you. And I always thought Brian Cage could be revamped and be ready to go. Him and uh, you know Murderhawk got to do some cool stuff. I think he's a strong, strong hand, but. AEW is going to start having the same problem that WWE has. Got a lot of talent, not a lot of TV. Someone's going to get lost in that shuffle. Now, these guys are going to be on television in front of a sold-out crowd in Austin, Texas. And I think if they got the minutes, they're going to try and do everything they can. But I do worry. This is one of those matches where they just want to go full for broke, right? Yeah. But maybe they don't have enough match. They don't have enough time out there to do it. So this wrestle is- yourselves into an angle, boys, and get yourself another match. But who knows? Uh, this is one of those matches where I worry this is one that could get bit by time on a show like this that has a lot going on because you know they're going to do a bunch of angles and they're going to have some surprise stuff and we're going to have to follow with Malachi Black. There's going to be a little, like angles and, and fun promos and stuff like that too. Um, so uh, this is one where I feel like they're going to get bit somehow. This is one of the this is one of those interesting things where I'm wondering. How much do do wins and losses really matter to the talent? Um, because you know, you, you you talk to different people. Yeah, they. You know, I've talked to Kofi Kingston before, and he's like, "Yeah, New Day, we want all the titles, we want all the gold, we want all the accolades. We're we're selfish. Give it to us." You know, they're Pac Man; they just want to eat it up. Then you talk to people like you know Finn Balor or Sami Zayn, and it's all about well, I don't care if I lose so much. Just you know, feature me. Let me let the story be great. You know, that's what I really want to focus. That's what I want to sink my teeth into. If you look at guys like Brian Cage and you look at, you know, Lance Archer, they have been on television. They have been featured. They have been in big matches. You mentioned Brian Cage came in, won the big poker chip, ended up fighting John Moxley in the main event for, uh, you know, the, the AEW World Championship. Yeah, he lost, but he was still there. Lance Archer has been featured heavily. He has been in huge matches. More often than not, he loses. He, he doesn't he doesn't get the 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 big win. But yeah. he's still been featured. Hell, Team Taz got the got to be in a match with Sting for crying yeah. out loud. Oh, I, I, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that Cage doesn't get featured, or isn't highlighted, or anything like that. And and what's to say if he was someone else, he would be a bigger star or stuff like that. Uh, but he is one of those people where he came over and he thought, all right, he World's could be. Master. Yes. And um, mind you, they've done main event stuff with them. I'm not saying the guy is like written off or anything like that. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. You know, but it is something I was just like of the matches on this card. This is one I'm like they could get bit by time. They could get but hey guys, you got you. I thought you had ten minutes, but now you have six or something like that. I you, worry about that. Let me ask you a question: Do you give a flying f about the FTW championship? No, and that's another that's another part of this is we have a vanity title. You want to do something with a vanity title? I'm much more intrigued to watch Cameron Grimes over at NXT be a butler to a million dollar champion, LA Knight. Yeah, uh, I, I want to watch that. Uh, they got they worked me up in a storm with that on Great American Bash. Loved it. Yeah, and the, and what, what what's gonna be coming after that with the you know we knew this is where we're going. You said it, you did that match so you could film Cameron Grimes being LA Knight's butler. Like that's that's and I'm on board Grimes to a T. And that's, that's why you do that. And that is that is WWE doing sports entertainment for sports entertainment's sake on a show that's all supposed to be wrestling, 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 right? right. And and I like that. This is two gym rat bros fighting for the gym rat bro like championship. That's what it is. It's the dojo title, right? right? And there's something to that, but that hasn't been crafted. That place, that mindset. That aura hasn't been invigorated by it. This you have this belt out there. It's an orange strap. It doesn't remind you of ECW. It doesn't. It doesn't play into that history and past the same way it does. And they're capable of doing that. I'm not saying that that, that hasn't been done. Running along, we're gonna we're gonna get lost here. Running along this card though, uh, this match is interesting. A coffin match. They didn't call it a casket match. A coffin match. Now, this was delayed a few weeks. This is Ethan Page, very personal issue against the former TNT champion, a man that he threw down a couple of concrete stairs. So I would be very, very angry if you did that to me. Darby Allen. Uh, Ethan Page versus Darby Allen. Uh, Page is on a ride here. I do think he is like Cage coming into AEW with a lot of hype underneath him. Uh, he was debuted as a surprise at a pay-per-view a few months back. 
uh, was featured in a match with Sting at Double or Nothing. Uh, and uh, Darby Allen not with Sting in his corner. Maybe Sting pops up next week in this coffin match here. I would uh, think so. yeah. You don't think so? No, I said I would think so. Yeah, I, I would think in this circumstance, I think he would too. Uh, where do you think this thing goes? Do they do they literally bury? Does Ethan Page get buried? Who gets buried? No, I think I I think I think Allen loses this matchup, and I I think that might be the best call. Um, man, this is this is such a this is such a ridiculous match built around such a simple but effective storyline. That that exchange that they did Wednesday night between Allen and Page was effing perfect just just ethan page holding a grudge against darby allen because you know darby was able to go off and and have the success that he wanted to have so quickly because he didn't have anything tying him down and not that you know the things tying him down in his life were bad right like he got married he had kids he couldn't really move out of his you know whatever but you do you see that guy go off who who's not you get to bad. you get to go to bed when you want and that pisses me off right it's that thing. It's like, yeah, yeah, no, you you go out to the bar on a Saturday night. I'm gonna put this kid to sleep. That's fine. It's simple things. Like we we all can kind of relate to that. We all have, you know, somebody. You know, we we all root for you know our our. Wait, wait uh, are you telling me, Rick, as a father, are you telling me I, I'm not as a, I'm just talking talking to you as a bearded child? Um, uh, are you telling me you put the kid to sleep? You don't go back to the bar. I couldn't tell you the last time I stepped foot. Uh, in a bar to be completely honest. Oh wait, yes, I can. My buddy's bachelor party, but still, um, yeah, but I had to go out of town uh, for that to, to happen. Oh man, we, we get to one here's of these the wrestling thing. road trips. Here, I gotta get, I, I, we're we're going to get some sodas in you for sure. <laughs> wait, oh, that's a dangerous proposition. <laughs> uh, but when you, yeah, when you put a six month down, they don't, they don't mm -hmm. like to stay down so mm -hmm. much. So yeah, it's kind of hard to, to do things like your nighttime <laughs> job, like cover pro wrestling. But some of us, we, we get the job done for the love of the game. Damn it. I think this um, will be a spectacle for the live crowd. This will be a spectacle on television. That's what they're going for. Uh, Stinger will come back in this in some form uh, and in some form, you know, uh, but it'll be weird if he comes back only for Darby Allen to still be stuffed in a, in a dead box. You know, yeah, I think that's so. the play. I think that's the play because, you know, yeah, if if Ethan Page, who who is somebody that you've built up really really quickly since he stepped in, I think Darby Allen's already a star. Like he's already a guy. He had the TNT title for six months. Uh, he got screwed out of, out of it. He doesn't look bad. I'm not saying Darby Allen is bulletproof, but he can survive a loss here more than Ethan Page. Can. And, and he got the rub of being with Sting. Uh, and oh, the, yeah. You, yeah, and so I do think he's a guy where he, Page needs it. And, they and need he, strong villains. I think there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of. Uh, outside of MJF, there's a lot of villains that look like they're on the verge of dropping their their toehold. And when you have that sea change, well, then you have to, you know, all right, the other side of that that, that wave, you have to have something else to them. And Paige is one of those guys that can talk people into matches, just like MJF is. Paige is one of those guys that is deceptively young. Some people think he's older than he actually is. Uh, and he's also a dynamic guy where he's one of those guys where he's going to be so evil that people are going to love him down the line. He's going to have that Ric Flair turnover where people just see so bad he's, he becomes good. Uh, and I do think long term, you got to think of how we get in page there. And I think stop beating up Darby Allen and I don't care about you sting and let's let's seal this thing shut is the way to go. Main event, though, this one's going to be a little bit more interesting here at the IWGP United States Championship, a sign of the very active partnership between all Elite Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Remember that WWE New Japan Pro Wrestling deal we heard about weeks ago? Yeah. How's that going? I don't. I'll tell you. I don't think that's dead. <laughs> me and me and one me and one uh, me and one uh, Sid have talked about that from True Heel. He, he he thinks that thing's deader than a doornail. He thinks it's deader than anyone in this coffin match. But I'm gonna tell you, I don't think that deal is dead at all. At all. Talking I mean, to people I, I talk I, to, that deal. Still possibility. I, th I think you're living in fantasy land, but okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I hey, I hope you're wrong. There, there. Are, I, I, hope I, I'm wrong. I am not at liberty to discuss. Oh. Okay. All right. So, uh, IWGP United States Championship. This is John Moxley versus Carl Anderson, the Machine Gun. That played footage of him in New Japan. He has a lot of history there. He brought. He dropped the Bullet Club name. Uh, and he's, of course, he's uh, running with the elite squad and doing all the running stuff, getting their heat, you know, cutting off the baby faces. And John Moxley's been under their skin for quite some time. Also, John Moxley, this is my look now. John Moxley, you stole 
the bearded bald look that is my thing dude all dude, right you you... That triple h what <laughs> <laughs> No, we're getting Moxley versus Anderson. Uh, Anderson has been featured mostly as a tag player for quite some time. Yeah. So, you know, he was a stud in New Japan. He was, he was, I think a lot of people forget that. This guy was a bona fide single star uh, in, in New Japan. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm kind of pulling for him in this match. I'd love to see him get a little, a little rub here, a little bit of respect, and, and, and walk around as that big-time singles champion that he has the capability. This guy's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. He's another one of these guys, uh, along with Gallows, that got brought back to WWE, and WWE just said, "All right, yeah, you, you're a couple of dudes for our roster. All right, we we don't really, we don't really see anything major in you, which is which is bullcrap. It's absolutely bullcrap. They're so much better than what WWE allowed them to be, and I think they're better than you know just running in and being Kenny Omega's, uh, you know, muscle basically. But uh, this this could be a, a good launching point for Carl Anderson to get back to proving just how good he is. Now, Mox is still my boy. Cincinnati Does that Mox. mean he wins the belt, though? Does that mean they take the belt off Mox? I don't think they I do. I don't know. I don't think they do. I don't think they do. I don't, know if, AEW, I don't know if AEW has the call. This may be. I don't know. I don't know if they have a call. I mean, certainly they have to have the call if it's going to be on their television. They have to have some say in it. It's an interesting scenario because I bring this up here. Uh, is it's this multiple plate spinning thing where WWE spins it with Raw and SmackDown and everything under our banner and everything we bring is in on our banner. With AEW, it's we have to respect the other people that we're working with, other promotions, and let their people go and bring them in. And the thing to remember is. Carl Anderson is not contracted to only wrestling. Oh, he's not. All right. He he is he, he's maybe subcontracted in a way. Uh they uh Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows have deals with Impact Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling. As far as I know. Obviously, they're getting compensated to work and perform on AEW. Sure. Wouldn't be there if they weren't. Um, it'll be interesting here because New Japan is in a very interesting situation where they have some wrestlers stopped here in the United States with the New Japan strong effort. Uh, Anderson and Gallus have been featuring that more recently. There's talk of getting them back to Japan as soon as they can. Japan planning on doing some big Tokyo Dome shows by the end of the summer. They just announced the G1 Climax, their month, their summer month long tournament thing. But then you have the Tokyo Olympics, which are going to have no fans. And that was announced today. And you still have the looming COVID issues in Asia, which are much more um, challenging than they are here in the United States, where yeah. the vaccination level is near 70% or near, we're nearing that. Uh, Japan, not there. They're just not 15%, there. Fifteen percent, which is surprising because their their precautionary uh, uh, ruling is were very strong in the early stages. They were doing shows a couple thousand people when we were in the we were in the the throes of the pandemic here. And then we're not done yet. Be smart out there, guys. All right, do what you got to do. Uh, so it'll be interesting if New Japan says, "Let's bring that belt back home." You know, John Moxley, we get you for a handful of dates a year, but. Anderson's our boy, and we want to we want to title on one of our guys. I could see that happening here huh. with some shenanigans at hand. Yeah, I mean, all it takes is Gallows to get involved, and then you know, boom. I mean, they they have made Moxley look incredibly strong, even in all of his defeats. It would be very easy to screw him over. Um, I I'm you know, not it'd help him. It gives him something to chase. It would. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It would give him something to him. chase. He could always chase the TNT championship. I think something I think something between John Moxley and Miro would be outstanding, to be completely honest with you. And Mox might be the guy who could take the title off of Miro so Miro could get up into the AEW title picture. That might be something that you do. Um, but right now, Miro's just too damn perfect. It's just whatever you're doing with Miro, just, just keep it up. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, but yeah, I could see Carl Anderson winning this one for sure. And you could, you could still make Moxley look strong in defeat, just like you have this entire time since he signed with AEW. It's an exciting time in wrestling overall. I'm going to say that. I know we're, we're bitching about this and how can they let this person go and these different things. We're, There's we're some exciting insane. stuff for WWE. We got fans coming back in arenas in just a few weeks. Yeah, and a few weeks, we got eight days. We got eight days until SmackDown, as of this recording, until SmackDown is back in front of a live audience. The most important SmackDown in years. Oh, God, yes. I mean, AEW is already out on the road. WWE is getting ready to go out on the road. And uh, God, I hope, I hope, I pray that, you know, much like AEW, you know, that, that, that show last night was spectacular. I mean, they, they kind of, they were definitely holding some things back until the live audience came around. <laughs> I'm hoping WWE has that same thing. I'm hoping they have tricks up their sleeve. I, I hope believe they, they are. Have, 
I'm hoping they have big things. If we get the first SmackDown in front of live fans in 18 months or whatever the hell that time frame was, and they go out there and they give us Big E versus Apollo, I'm going to scream. I'm going to scream into the void and throw my computer screen through my wall. I won't be on Smack Talk that night because I'll be too <laughs> pissed off and I won't have a voice left to talk. Okay? If, if I see Seth Rollins and Cesaro <laughs> on that first SmackDown back, I, I, I'm i going to throw my wife's chair at my cat. Okay? Something <laughs> no! Bad. What did the cat do? I won't hit it. It's too fast. So I- <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 look. We're gonna we're gonna get in trouble now. Don't call whole- Peta. Don't call Peta. I'm joking. I'm just saying I'm gonna be very very upset if we see the same talent <laughs> working with the same talent that we have been for months. I know. Please tell me there's a plan. Please tell me there's something in place because right now something that we haven't talked about. Raw just posted its worst rating of all time, and I know we can sit here and say ratings aren't gauged uh, the same anymore, and they still get millions of hits on YouTube. It's still a problem. One point yeah. four million people for a Monday Night Raw is a problem, and they know they have a problem. And they got Stephanie McMahon, you know, meeting with network executives, sitting here going, "Well, how do we fix it? Do we need to do more Legends Nights? Do we need to do more tournaments? Do we need to bring back Cyber Tuesday and this, that, and the other thing?" Yeah, those are great, but you know what'll help? Fresh new matchups with simple storytelling. I was talking about Ethan Page and and Darby Allen. That was perfect last night. It was perfect. It was powerful. It was personal. It was simple. WWE doesn't have a whole lot of that. They need to adapt that model. I'm okay with Alexa Bliss being crazy and, and psychedelic and having some uh, some creative things mixed in there like that. Yeah. But you look at what Ethan Page and Darby Allen did on Wednesday and then go compare that to the fake crutch fight that we saw between Rhea and Charlotte. And it's like, what the hell are we even doing here? It's you look at the promo that Dr. Britt Baker cut last night with that vicious little blood diamond stab at Saudi Arabia, the Saudi Arabia contract. You look at those kind of promos and then what Rhea Ripley has been given to work with or what Bianca Belair has been given to work with most days. And it's like, this is night and day. Like, what are we doing? AEW is a better show right now. It just is. It just is. And I say that as a as a longtime WWE fan who can enjoy both shows and still does genuinely enjoy a and lot you're of not, you're not including but. NXT in that conversation, are you? I am. Yes, I am. You I think it's better than NXT. Uh it th- those are the two best. They're pretty close. They're pretty close. SmackDown has been SmackDown what? has been pretty good as what? of late. What? I almost <laughs> thought we were wrapping up the show. I thought we were too. running. Late we, we, we came down, we, we're at number 29 in the Royal Rumble. We All right, who is, who is the thirtieth man? We got hijinks. What is, what is what is Sean Ross Sapp doing in the in the sports keto no! zone? <laughs> These worlds aren't supposed to exist in one place. We broke the forbidden wall. We did. <laughs> we did. Uh, broken. Sorry, uh, I was a little late. A little late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ladies and Something gentlemen. Uh, if, if you're if you're on the podcast side of things, joining us from Fightful.com, you, you should subscribe to Fightful Select. That's where you get the real scoops. Uh, and ma- ma- scoops. What, what, what do I say? Manscape, cereal, uh, <laughs> cereal, <laughs> allform.com slash Fightful. Uh, I got a I got a love seat that I'm I'm putting together. It's it's spill resistant, stain resistant. You're selling Shea lounges now. This is the, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's wonderful. We're, get, we're getting points on mattresses. We're getting all this. <laughs> yes, I got um, mat- I've got a mattress. Uh, of course sponsor. you have. A, of course you have a mattress deal, Sean. I'm, I was joking, but of course you have a mattress deal. And why God not? Bless this, you. Man, this man is effing Hawkeye. He don't miss. This yeah. guy has been all over everything. If you, I'm serious. If you guys aren't sele- uh, uh, subscribed to Fightful Select, you got to do it because you're missing out on all the top news when it drops. This guy has been on fire. This guy needs to go to a casino right now, bet on black <laughs> and the number five because he has just been uh, <laughs> rolling in it right now. Uh, my man all over uh, the uh, Alistair Black and Zelina Vega news this week, uh, both of them returning to separate companies within the same week. Sean, uh, man, the Quite a lot happening in one household there. Quite a lot happening. Fortunately, that 5% of the time, the dirt sheets are right. Works out pretty well for me. Um, FightfulSelect.com. But yeah, that first off, Alistair Black heading over to AEW is perfect for him. He's going to rock there. If Zelina is allowed to do 
literally anything creatively satisfying, she's going to knock it out of the park because when has she not been good when they give her something like when she wrestles, she, she does, she has fine. She hasn't been a full-time wrestler in a long time when she manages, she rocks. And, and when she cuts a promo, she rocks. Yeah. She's a compelling character and, and they need dynamic players like that who can do both of those things. And yep. she's, she's a full tool player. They, they have some people that are oh more of a personality, more of a wrestler. She is one of those things where you could put her on commentary if you needed to, you could have her do all these different things and, and also still very young. And, and as that female audience grows, I, I I've seen it more the last before the pandemic, the before yes. times, you know, I was talking 2019 when we say before times, <laughs> um, I would go to WWE shows and I was always like, there's a lot of, women here there's a lot of women here and we got to have more of that in the ring and we got to have more presence to that and you're going to need more dynamic players it's a good thing an interesting scenario we were we were wrapping up here sean but it's a big time for wrestling it feels like the reboot is already in full force we saw yeah. last night with AEW. we're looking forward here with what wwe is doing a very critical weekend for them coming up here july 16th uh with this smackdown on fox two days before uh we have money in the bank in texas that loop there that first big loop where Tickets are moving well. It does feel like the word uh, is that this is a hard reboot for WWE moving forward. Does it seem like it's lining up that way? That's what WWE contacts want me to think. <laughs> they, they keep assuring me. We know it's the, the time for a reboot. We know. And I was like, yeah, but you guys have told me this after every WrestleMania and every time there's a shakeup and every time there's a draft and every time you go to a new network or something like that. I've been told this so many times mm -hmm. that it's hard for me to give them the benefit of the doubt. Now, we'll see. I hope that it's wrong, but it's like, fool me 29 times. Shame on me. I, I'm not going to fall for that. I, I don't believe they care enough about the continuity of their product to make a categorical difference. And I think everything comes down to who wins and who loses the matches matters and attention to detail matters you make a smarter show you make a more compelling show and it all goes hand in hand when you do those things you make more stars you don't have to rely on people that haven't been around for a long time yeah i was gonna say it i hope that they have more up their sleeve than just relying on the becky lynch's the john cena's and the brock lesnar's to come in and and, and save their show yeah it's gonna pop ratings but i mean if you have them doing dumb stuff it, eventually it's gonna come down to it and this is something i was talking about earlier the, the exchange between Darby Allen and Ethan Page last night on AEW mm -hmm. was perfect. It was personal. It was passionate. It was simple. Simple storytelling, and that goes a long way. That is not WWE's forte. You got Stephanie McMahon going to meetings with TV execs talking about how can we make the show better. We had to do Cyber Sunday, and we got to bring back the King of the Ring, and we got to do all these special yeah. things. Yeah, those will help. But you know what? A long sustained product where you're actually building up people, that that that's it's the answer. I don't know I don't know how WWE doesn't see that. WrestleMania was like good in spite of their booking. And there are a lot of people that say, "Oh, well look, they did fine without uh, without having satisfying stories." So that's because they can put a video package together and it's always going to be good and people that are just tuning in will be like, "Oh, well this must have been a good feud." Almost none of them were you want to build sustained and, and cohesive storylines that way when you have a Becky Lynch, a John Cena, et cetera, to come back, there's somebody that people want them to fight and not just because they're good in the ring, but because there's, there's something creative and there's something compelling as to what's going to happen when this person fights this person. Uh, and I wish they do that more. They do it with a couple people. Roman yeah. Reigns is a very yeah. good example. Uh, Bobby Lashley is a pretty good, good example but he's been he's lost quite a bit recently as well but uh they need to do it with more people and is there any is there any factor of this being in front of live fans circumstantially you saw how much the pandemic challenged everybody it didn't matter who you were you, you were gonna have to find another way to do this and really lean on social media to be the gauge of what's working and what's not right um is any factor of being in front of live crowds you think gonna make a seismic difference for for wwe for AEW, for these different companies where that's something they have to readjust and get back to uh my my perspective is it has to a little bit how much i don't know yes lots i mean for for months i've been like Cody isn't Captain America. He's Homelander. Well, then he goes to Miami and he gets <laughs> cheered heavily. And uh, so it's like, what the, what the hell do I know there? I mean, Tamina got a pop during WrestleMania weekend and got a, push. no one saw that coming. No yeah. one saw that coming. Yeah. I don't, press box. It was great. I, I don't know who's over right now. 
I just, you don't know. With AEW, it's been very similar to their pushes and their reactions. That's a different audience. That's an audience that very much wants them to succeed. The WWE audience is a little bit different. A lot of times they want to get themselves over, and that's okay. You can do what you wanted to show, but I don't know who is going to get a positive reaction, a negative reaction, or maybe most interestingly, no reaction at all. And how will WWE crowds adjust? A lot of times they were quiet. A lot of the time. And now, after not having this for a year and a half, I wonder how rabid they'll be, how excited they'll be. I, I feel there'll be some audiences that are just yeah. pumped. They're just pumped to see shows again. And and it'll center people back towards those things. People, Things that people are less jaded about will be yeah. interesting. Uh, we, we, we did cover this. I do want your take on this. An interesting move by WWE in a few weeks. It really pisses off uh, Rick here because he's from Ohio. Is oh, yeah. WWE doing this split broadcast? Uh, a very interesting them reaching out of the wrestling bubble move to broadcast part of SmackDown from the very hip, cool, rolling loud hip hop festival in Miami, Florida, and then the base of operations for SmackDown in Cleveland, Ohio. Interesting move by WWE. Your take. It didn't work for the raw gimmick, uh, the raw 30, 25, whatever the hell anniversary it was. Yeah, and it, it didn't work. Didn't work yeah. It didn't work there. It was bad. It was it was miserable. I feel bad for the people who paid for tickets in Cleveland. I feel really bad. And that's my take on it. Is you know, it if they're gonna do this, do it for a show that's that's in the future because this is a, a rolling festival. You could have done this at a later date for a show that's or, not. Or, or, or you say do the whole show at the festival. If you're gonna do it, do yes. go all in. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because yeah. like I'm I am I didn't pay you know for tickets, so I'm not pissed off there. But I still am driving five hours up to Cleveland to watch a show. Yeah. And I was expecting to see the full two hours in person. And now somebody who I'm assuming is going to be a big star, somebody a la Bailey or Sasha Banks, I'm not going to get to see that I have to watch on a television screen instead uh, that I was hoping to see uh, in person. So that's, yeah, that's where I get it. I feel bad for the people who uh, who already bought tickets. It's like, okay, don't change a show like that mm -hmm. uh, you know, after you've already uh, you've already sold tickets. On I, I agree with you. I completely agree. It should It shouldn't work like that. I'm I'm into the idea because I just think it's out of the box. It's something different. It's not something you're going to do all the time. It is a sign that WWE says, "All right, let's do something that reaches people or reinvigorate some fans that haven't watched what we're doing." And also, I, I think there's going to be some people that haven't seen live wrestling in a long time. They're going to watch it for the first time in a long time if they have it at that festival. I think it's a good idea for the genre of wrestling. Rick, you got yep. something? Yeah, Sean, I did want to uh, ask you. Uh, obviously, uh, SmackDown uh, tomorrow night or or tonight, depending on when you are are watching this program. A uh, lot of eyes going to be on one uh, Jimmy Uso. I know you had an uh, you know, update, uh, some unfortunate uh, business that happened this week with him getting another DUI on, on Monday night, and you had some some backstage uh, reaction to that. What's the latest you're hearing on his status right now? Uh, I don't know about his status. Uh, I, a lot of frustration, concern, all that. And anybody who's reached out to WWE in recent years over stuff like that, they get the line, this person is responsible for their own personal actions. I had actually two wrestlers say, did they give you that line again? And I said, no, they didn't get back to me whatsoever. And they said, good, because that shouldn't be the line in this case. It's the third or fourth time it's happened. It needs to be not just their responsibility, but they need to step in because they don't, nobody wants Jimmy Uso hurt mm -hmm. and nobody wants somebody else hurt. Um, he, he, and I don't care if it's the first time he's done it in years or what the situation is. The fact that it happened is not okay. Right. And, you know, again, this is something where, you know, clearly he needs help. Uh, yes. You know, this is an ongoing issue and that's, that's the most important thing. Um, it, it, the, yes, the timing sucks that he's in the midst of the, the biggest push, but that's not the most important thing here right now. It'd be no. very easy for him to take some some time off and remove him. He just got his ass kicked by by Edge last week, so it'd be very easy to write him off television. Uh, it's a very very uh, unfortunate thing. Uh, one thing I did wanted to ask you about uh, real quick, uh, Sean, um, with with the whole Alistair Black uh, timing. Going back to that real quick. I mean, my biggest thing is what the hell is WWE doing? Uh, basically just letting this dude walk, uh, not updating his non-compete, uh, which was the report from Meltzer and uh, and PW Insider. I mean, especially when you know, you're bringing Zelina Vega back at the same time. And then you just let this guy walk this whole timeline and everything they're doing that WWE did. It's, it's very, very confusing. It sure is. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> the person responsible for not updating that deal uh, is no longer there and maybe a contributing factor for one of the many reasons why that person is no longer there. 
what what can you possibly say about that? Now, the, the, the irony is, for a lot of these people, they if they asked out of their 90 days, they would get out anyway. Uh, yeah. there, there's going to be at least one person I know of that's going to pop up. I don't want to say where or narrow down when, but <laughs> over the next two weeks covers it because... MLW, Ring of Honor, Impact, AEW all have shows in the next two weeks. <laughs> there, there are there are a few names that I'm aware of as well. So yeah, yes, that, that lines that, up with what I've been hearing. Yeah. There, there are some people that, or at least one person that has some lenience there, and you'll see who it is. Uh, but I think that's good of WWE because I think it'd be real bad if they said, Hey, we're going to budget cut you guys. And then these people are like, well, let us out of our 90 days. And they say no, <laughs> because that counteracts what they're doing. Now there are some people like Wesley Blake told me he didn't ask. He doesn't care. He's like, I'm taking my 90 days and I'm going to get paid. Uh, but there are some other people. Um, Anthony green has 30 days. Tony niece has 90 days. It's all over the map where some of these people are. And, um, yeah, I think some of those contracts probably should have been paid a little more attention to. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just I just don't get how you and we've seen them do this with with several guys, Andrade, Miro, uh, you know, Christian to a certain extent. They just don't see enough value in these guys to one push them when they have them and then they just And then they bring Joe back. Them. And then Samoa Joe's back in NXT and they and they, they uh, that's That it's, was it's, Triple H. That was yeah. Triple H you said, uh, F nah, uh we're we're getting <laughs> we're getting yeah. Joe back. We're not letting him go cuz I see the value there. I just I don't, I don't understand what WWE is doing. I don't understand how they don't see value in some of these guys where uh, clearly other companies and the fans do as well. And honestly, I think it has put them in a really bad situation where if they're stock, like WWE is nosediving heading into live crowds while AEW is just flying high right now. I and, don't know. Triple H, Triple H tried to say, oh, well, you know, we were working him into another position already. No, you weren't. <laughs> he, he put out a tweet saying, working out this 90 days. Like, doing doing a, a a bow like come on come on yeah it's i don't know how wwe reverses course they i think they have done a lot uh to to hinder themselves heading back into the live crowd where it's it's almost like i don't know how the fans are going to react because i don't know how anybody could be excited about this product right now yeah and hopefully that changes because good wrestling is my favorite thing in the world <laughs> And I think, I think if anything, the fans are going to show up to support their favorite talent. And I think that's, yeah. that's yeah. the important thing. That's why I watch every week is because I want to see, you know, the people that I love. Do also, really it's just like circumstantial. Some people want live entertainment. You know, I mean, people just yeah. want to go out and do something and see something. And WWE's coming to town. We're buying a ticket, you know. And, and I think for a lot of people, that's still a factor of this. And it, it, it's a brand. It's a show we know. We've seen it before. We're going to buy tickets again. And, you know, uh, and there's nothing wrong with being familiar with something that you want to buy, you know, yeah. and, and I think there's some uh, part of that here. Sean, you, you see the tea leaves before it. Uh, as we mentioned, everyone's getting back live shows, big names coming back. What's a big story that you see on the horizon, some big possibilities in the, in the, in the industry right now that people are sleeping on? Pay attention to this. There's something going to be happening here in, in the better part of 2021. CM Punk back to WWE. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> CM Punk back um, to wrestling in general is, is an interesting possibility. How WWE adjusts their contracts now that they have fans back because they yeah. were offering big, big, big money deals in 2019. And a lot of those people that signed those big money deals got fired. Mm -hmm. uh, and the new signings were offered... In some cases, one third the amount that comparable wrestlers were being offered in 2019. How will that affect things? Will people jump to other companies? Will they bet on themselves? Specifically, I want to see how the independent circuit does with this rush of globally uh, exposed talent. Because yeah. we, we've seen it like you've got Warrior and GCW and Black Label Pro and these big name. I'm at AEW on pay per view tomorrow night. Uh, fight a TV, a a w stand. and, and yeah. AIW and all these yeah. great indie promotions. I think some of the the ones that are lesser are going to be supplemented. Boy, PWG is going to be back very soon. And that first show they have back, they've literally said we're not telling you anyone on the show. Yes, that, that's that's it. the beauty of it. Mystery Vortex. I think WWE should steal that idea. It's a great a idea. Special and say v Mystery Vortex. It's just you know you'd get. Baron Corbin versus Nakamura and Apollo Crews against a member of the Hurt Business because that's what hey, they do. Hey, happy Corbin. 
All right. It's Happy it's, Corbin. It's, yes. Happy, Happy Corbin. Happy. Sooner rather than later. Because that's the guy yeah. you want to turn into a big baby face. Yes, he indeed. He doesn't need a car. He takes a cab and a bus to the show. He'll, he'll figure it out. It's now okay. he doesn't have anything. He's lost hundreds <laughs> of thousands of dollars in investments for some reason. Uh, Sean, you're the best, man. You, you've constantly been killing it. Again, subscribe to Fightful Select. Celebrating a five-year anniversary uh, this week. And uh, congratulations. And Congrats, just, man. Yeah. Everything also, you guys you. You're, you're, also, you're absolutely uh, killing it. Can I ask a question? When do I get to hang out with Robert again? Will you let me hang Never. out with Robert DeVelis? Let Never. me have my boy. I, I'm protecting you. Give me my boy back. No. All right. He's ours. We stole him. He's <laughs> ours. All right. You know what, Kevin? I got an idea. I got an idea. Whenever Sean Ross app finally gets in a ring with me, we'll do a Robert DeVelis on a pole match. Yes. There you go. There you go. Nothing will happen. On a ladder. <laughs> Hopefully within, hopefully within the next year, we're, we're talking about the terrible match that we had and not the one that we'll have. <laughs> leapfrogs all day long. We're just going to do leapfrogs. Everybody looks at the Parker video. Wow, he can do a leapfrog. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, he played football. He's an athlete. Adam Pac-Man Jones literally did a leapfrog in TNA when they wouldn't let him touch anybody because it would void his NFL contract. It ain't that impressive. I can do a leapfrog. I've got video of me doing a leapfrog. I can, well, I can do a there. really good leapfrog. I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. You probably could also uh, jump. You know, you know who can also do leapfrogs? Uh, people in kindergarten can yes. do leapfrogs. Yes. <laughs> so I'm, I'm Apparently, the only person on the planet who can't do a leapfrog is Louis Dangor because he was one of those guys who was just, <laughs> just through the roof. Uh, we're we're like, talking wow. some shop now. We're, 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 getting, we're getting real into the shop right now. Uh, so, definitely go check out Fightful Select and Fightful.com. Millennial Meltzer himself right there. Sean Ross up with us. Uh, thank you guys so much for checking out the channel. If you're uh, popping over here because you've seen Sean before, well, thank you. Uh, go check our stuff out on YouTube, on the Spotify machine, on the Apple podcast machine. Uh, a lot of busy stuff. Uh, I will be busy with AAW on pay-per-view this Friday night. United We Stand available worldwide on Fight.TV. Rick. Yes, tomorrow night, myself, SP3. Dutch Mantel, Smack Talk, 10.05. And uh, I think we're competing with Sean, who has a post-Smackdown as well. So worlds collide uh, tomorrow night. But you can check out. I, yeah, yeah, indeed. I got an interview with Buddy Murphy dropping very soon. His first That's why he was so late. Interview. He was big-timing us. He was yes. big-timing the hell out of us talking to Buddy Murphy. Like, that's more for, important than like an, my cradle. For like an hour and a half, we <laughs> talked, too. I, I know. Like you, told me, you told me what time you were talking, and I'm like, it's 3.30. You know, he's, he's still going. Well, well he, he said to me, I got a couple hours free. I said, oh, do you? <laughs> Can't wait to see all of that. I'm sure that'll come out in uh, multiple sections. Son, uh, you're you're the absolute best. Thank you, sir. And again, we appreciate everybody. We'll be back next week, Thursday night, 8 o'clock, the Inside Cradle here on the Sports Kid Wrestling YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, everybody have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. The last SmackDown of the Thunderdome tomorrow night. Thank God. See you guys. guys.